Oh, I forgot about that. With huge names like McDonald's, Burger King, and KFC as your competition, it takes a lot to stay relevant in the fast food game. So let's look back at 15 forgotten fast food chains. Howard Johnson's. So I must make my hotel of dreams like every other Howard Johnson's. Howard Johnson's chain of restaurants is not one that many people remember, but it was once a very popular roadside stop. Known at the time for their simple and delicious menu, they were the perfect stop on a road trip whether you were traveling for fun or work. In the 1950s and 1960s, this chain had over 1,000 restaurants across the country, and each one of them was thriving and serving the same food across all menus no matter the location. While customers thought this was great for a while, people eventually got bored of the same choices and stopped going. I am looking forward to lunch. Howard Johnson's would eventually close its doors due to the fact that they did not make the changes that their customers were craving. Yogi Bear's Fried Chicken is Fry Fry Chicky Chick Late in the 1960s, Yogi Bear's Honey Fried Chicken would launch their first franchise restaurant. While the chain would never grow to huge numbers, it was a hit nonetheless. They licensed the Yogi Bear character from Hanna-Barbera and they opened for business. The first few restaurants were very popular, and soon enough, the Hardee's company spent a lot of money and bought out the franchise. This would slowly become the downfall of Yogi Bear's Honey Fried Chicken, as Hardee's neglected to really put any attention into the restaurants. Why? Eventually, the outlets would all close due to this neglect and the fact that business had slowed to nearly a trickle. When the restaurants closed, they left large statues of Yogi and other cartoon characters around, and one dumping ground for these statues unintentionally became a tourist attraction. People coming from all over the place to see these abandoned statues of the much-beloved characters. Brown Derby Welcome to Hollywood. This chain restaurant dates back to the mid-1920s, when their first and most iconic restaurant opened. Built to look like a brown-colored derby hat, the unique shape was a large draw for a lot of people. The chain never really expanded to hundreds of restaurants, but they were extremely popular in their heyday despite that fact. They were known as a popular celebrity hangout, with many big names spending time at the restaurant, which helped draw crowds in through the doors. Jeez, look at this line. This free celebrity advertising would not last forever, though, and the Brown Derby chain would eventually begin closing their doors. The restaurant's downfall was simply that the novelty wore off and people stopped showing up, including the celebrities. The end of the Brown Derby was inevitable, and soon the name would only live on with unrelated businesses attempting to use the name for a quick cash grab. Eat Big Beef. Franchise, franchise. Franchise. In the 1960s, Heap Big Beef found moderate success by jumping aboard the franchise train. Franchising had become the next big craze among those who wanted to work for themselves and be their own boss. Heap Big Beef's fatal flaw was that the business was never really about the food. In fact, the restaurant was created just to try and cash in on the franchising craze. Money, 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 money. The original founder had tried and failed with several franchises over his lifetime, and not all of them were food-related. He was simply a man who believed that anything could be franchised, and did not think that experience or a passion for the industry was needed when it came to running your own franchise. Yikes, that's a recipe for disappointment. This would prove false, as Heat Big Beef did not last long against competitors who truly cared about the food they served. All-Star Cafe Hello? Hollywood? All-Star Cafe was a sports-themed restaurant chain that was owned by Planet Hollywood. At its peak, there were 10 restaurants open, and all 10 of them were extremely busy. While their menus were nothing out of the ordinary, the theme restaurant craze was more than enough to drive people through the doors of these overly decorated restaurants, and enough to put a pretty fantastic helping of profits in the pockets of those at Planet Hollywood. Huh? I'm rich. I'm rich! <laughs> These restaurants are yet another example of something that was a complete novelty fad. People loved them at first, but with no real innovation or change, they eventually died out, and all of these restaurants have closed their doors. Burger Chef Hamburgers! The cornerstone of any nutritious breakfast. 
Burger Chef was opened in the mid-1950s and was extremely popular for quite a few years. Unsurprisingly, they served hamburgers, fries, and all the classic sides that go along with burger restaurants. Known as the first to come up with the idea of giving out a toy with the purchase of a child-sized meal, Burger Chef found booming success with this gimmick, as well as the fact that the food they served was quite delicious. Not bad. Not bad. Parents loved to go for the juicy hamburgers that were offered, and kids loved to go for the toys that they would get to go along with their food. Unfortunately, Burger Chef just didn't have what it took to continue to compete in the space. And as more and more fast food burger places began to open up, Burger Chef fell in terms of popularity. The last restaurant would close its doors in 1981, marking the end of a successful past for the company that once had over 1,200 restaurants in operation. Show your support by hitting that like button. We do appreciate it. Now, let's keep going. The show goes on! Yeah! Burger Queen. Matter of fact, it's the best burger I've had in years. Burger Queen may have a name that sounds like another chain restaurant, Dairy Queen, but back in the 1950s, Burger Queen was a popular stop for many. In fact, the two restaurants would eventually end up having something to do with each other. Since DQ came first, it's unclear whether the Burger Queen name was inspired by Dairy Queen. In any case, only one of them would be left standing in the 2000s. Serving food that included burgers, of course, as well as chicken and sides, Burger Queen operated under that name for a while before eventually changing it to Druthers for some unknown reason. After the name change, the restaurant chain began to really see a decline, and by 1990, most of the restaurants were actually purchased and taken over by Dairy Queen, and the name Burger Queen would fade out of existence. It's... it's gone. While these restaurants may no longer exist, there are people out there who still, hopefully fondly, remember Burger Queen. Beef Steak Charlie's So then I went over to Beef Steak Chulies. Beef Steak Charlie's? Yes! The 20th century saw the popularity of theme restaurants come and go. They would pop up and experience success for a while before the next big theme trend would find its way into the market, at which point the older ones would simply close their doors and move on. It is what it is. Beef Steak Charlie's was just another one of these theme restaurants that enjoyed a short time of success before their novelty wore off. This restaurant's theme was centered around horse racing, not the first thing to come to mind when mentioning theme restaurants, and the restaurant was mostly known for their steak sandwiches. These sandwiches, however, would not carry them through the decades, and after a quick rise to 60 chains, they would begin to decline, and in 2009, the final Beef Steak Charlie's would close its doors forever. Carol's. Come in? Of course. Carol's was not one of those theme restaurants that were once so popular. Instead, they were just a regular home-cooked meal type of establishment that offered a variety of home-style comfort foods that people loved. It was delicious. Carol's chain of restaurants would all be closed by the 1980s, but the parent company that had owned them continued to see success. In fact, the company currently owns the largest franchise collection of Burger Kings out of any franchise owners. So while Carol's did not see success in the long run, the people behind it had other, more long-term success. Chicken George Cuckoo ka -cha! Chicken George was probably one of the smallest chain-style restaurants to see immense popularity. And while they never grew to anywhere near the numbers of some of the other restaurants on this list, they still saw a lot of success in the time they were open. Capping at a total of six restaurants, the original location remained their most popular for many years. Unfortunately, like so many other restaurants who tried to make it big, they faced plenty of competition. It's too much! It's too much! The chain just couldn't quite break out into something huge. In 1991, the last Chicken George closed its doors, and the chain fell out of existence, only existing in the memories of those who had experienced George's chicken. Casa Bonita We only really serve Mexican food. 
A Mexican food-inspired chain, Casa Bonita was famous for a few specialty dishes, as well as serving all-you-can-eat chicken and beef plates. All-you-can-eat? It did really well for quite some time. The building's decor and fun atmosphere enticed people to enjoy their Mexican-inspired dishes. Casa Bonita became a great spot for a family dinner out, and the all-you-can-eat options were very reasonably priced for those who had a big appetite. People were charmed by the theme and decor. The restaurant had a Mexican theme without going over the top with too many obnoxious decorations covering the walls. However, their popularity greatly waned in 1993 when they rebranded, and all of the restaurants closed their doors except one. They would never experience the popularity they had once known again, but their one singular restaurant stood tall, a small reminder of the once extremely popular restaurant chain. Cheech cheese. Boom. Oh, Mexican food! Chi Chi's was another popular Mexican themed restaurant, though this one went a little more all out with the paint colors and decorations than Casa Bonita. Chi Chi's also had a bit of a rough history that caused them to close their doors rather quickly and end their legacy lingering in scandal. Their first issue was when they became known as the restaurant that had the largest outbreak of hepatitis A in the history of the United States. Ugh, gross, right, guys? Shortly after that, the company had to declare bankruptcy due to a major decline in sales after the outbreak. Outback Steakhouse bought out the majority of their properties, and the restaurant left the United States altogether. Delights. Peter, it's time for a healthy veggie dinner. Delights was one of the original restaurants to offer healthier options when it came to fast food, including things such as lean ground beef and low fat cheese in their hamburgers. I'm going to use low fat ingredients. Game changer. They found small ways to make their menu offerings at least a bit healthier than their competitors. In the first two years of opening, Delights quickly grew to having over 100 stores under their brand, offering their slightly healthier take on fast food. This quick growth came at a price, though, and only a year later, the chain would begin closing some of those restaurants down. By the end of that same year, the company had claimed bankruptcy. The remaining restaurants were sold off to Hardee's, and the name Delights would fade out of existence. He's driving. That's it. And then? No, and then. I, I, that's, that's all I want. Dee's Drive-In was the epitome of greasy fast food in the 1920s. Catering largely to local college students, this budget-friendly drive-in restaurant was all the rage when they opened their first location. Shut up and take my money! While they did find success among young college students in Utah, their attempts at expansion did not quite see the same volume of customers. While the food and service appealed to those busy students who had a lot going on as it was, it was not quite as appealing to to the general masses who had the time and money to be a little more choosy with where they ate. They did keep afloat for a good 50 or so years, but eventually their success would end and the last D's drive-in was sold off to Hardee's, a fate that seems to happen to quite a few restaurant chains that cannot quite make it among the growing competition. Doggy Diner You came to Top Dog Terry. Smart move. Doggy Diner sounds like a place you bring your furry friend for a dinner made for pooches, but disappointingly, this was not the case. Doggy Diner was, in fact, a chain of restaurants that began in the 1950s. They specialized in hot dogs and hamburgers, and were a popular stop for those who wanted to enjoy one or the other, or even both. My hot dog! They enjoyed a rather long history of success, keeping their doors open for almost four decades. Sadly, they did did not quite make the 40-year mark, and after 38 years of service, the last doggy diner closed its doors to the public, leaving only the giant dog head mascot statues for people to remember them by, until even those vanished as new places took over their previous locations. I miss them. Thanks for sticking around. We've got more videos just for you, so stay right here and check one out.